Today we're going to discuss uh, calculations involving heat transfer. Now the equation that we're going to use for this is this equation right here, Q equals MC delta T. Now each one of the variables here, or one of the values, stands for something different. The Q stands for the amount of heat transferred into an object or out of an object. And the SI unit for heat is joules. And that's the unit that we're going to use in this class. Now that's not the only unit we could use for heat. There's another unit that you've heard of called calories, which could be used. Uh, that's in the English system. But in this class, we're going to use joules for heat transfer. We could also talk about M. That's the mass of the object or the material. And that's measured in grams. So that's our M. Next we have C. Now this is a, a constant that's different for every material. This is called the specific heat capacity. Uh, sometimes it's just re referred to as the specific heat. But this is a constant that it has funny units. It's joules per gram degree Celsius. And it refers to uh, how well a material resists temperature change. Now, probably one of the best ways we can illustrate that is if we think of maybe a spoon or some piece of metal, and we lay that out in the sun on a hot day. Well, that spoon or that, that metallic object is going to heat up very quickly. It has a low specific heat capacity. It, it doesn't offer much resistance to temperature change. On the other hand, if you have a... Uh, a pot of water and you sit that outside on a hot sunny day, well its temperature is going to heat up too but not nearly as much as the spoon because water has a higher resistance to temperature change. So we say it has a higher specific heat capacity. And we'll see that as we do some problems here in a minute. Now delta T is the change in temperature of an object and that's measured in degrees Celsius. And so for example if we go from uh, 10, whoops, from uh, let's say from 10 degrees Celsius to 20 degrees Celsius, do you all see that that is a delta T of 10 degrees? The temperature's changing by 10. What's the delta T if we go from 15 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius? Hopefully, you see that that's a change of 20. What about if we go from 70 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees. What's the delta T there? Do you see that it's negative 10? Since the temperature is going down, it is a negative delta T. Well, we're going to use these values, the Q, M, C, and delta T, and we're going to plug those into the equation to solve for an unknown value. So here is the example that we're going to use here. And this is where we have iron metal. And it says it has a specific heat capacity of 0.45 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the question is, how many joules will it take to raise 20.0 grams of iron from 25 degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius? So we're going to use the equation that we had there, Q equals MC delta T. And we're just going to plug into this equation. And of course, we may need a calculator for this as well. Now, Q is measured in joules. And so the question here says, how many joules? And so Q is our unknown. That's what we're going to solve for. Now, M, we said, is the mass of the object. And it's 20.0 grams. So I'm going to put 20. 0 0.0 grams in there for the mass. Now C is the specific heat capacity. And here's its value right there. It's 0.45 joules per gram degree Celsius. And then we have delta T. It says it's going from 25 degrees to 45 degrees. So once again, what is that delta T? Hopefully you see that that's a rise of 20 degrees. So our, our change in temperature is 20 
degrees Celsius. So now all we have to do is solve for Q. So our grams cancel and our degrees Celsius cancel. So our answer is going to be in joules. And when you take a calculator and you multiply 20.0 times 0.45 times 20, you get that there's a transfer of 180 joules of heat. And so that's the answer to that problem. Let's try another one. We have an unknown block of material that has a mass of 24.0 grams. If we add 1,000 joules of heat to this block and its temperature rises from 15 degrees Celsius to 29 degrees Celsius, what is its specific heat? So once again, we're using the equation Q equals MC delta T. And Q is joules, and this time it tells us that we're adding 1,000 joules of heat. So that's our value for Q, 1,000 joules. M is the mass. It says right here in the first line it has a mass of 24.0 grams. So that is going to be plugged in for M, the mass. C is specific heat capacity. And the question is, what is its specific heat? So that's what we're solving for. We're solving for C. And then delta T is the change in temperature. It says it goes from 15 degrees Celsius to 29 degrees Celsius. So when you subtract those numbers, you see that it's a rise of 14 degrees Celsius. So that's our, our delta T. So now we just have to solve for C. And so what we can do is divide both sides by 24 grams and 14 degrees Celsius. Do the same thing on the left side. And when we do that, of course, these cancel. And our answer, when we punch that into our calculator, we find that the answer is about 2.98 and our units are joules per gram degree Celsius and so that's our answer for the second problem here that's our answer for C let's try one more example this time it says, and this might be a little bit more advanced, it says we have a substance with a specific heat capacity of 0 0.20 joules per gram degree Celsius and a mass of 100 grams. If we add 1,000 joules of heat to this material at 10 degrees Celsius, what will be its final temperature? Well, once again, we're using the equation Q equals mc delta T. Q is the number of joules that's transferred. It says we're adding 1,000 joules to this, so that's our Q. M is the mass, and it says it has a mass of 100 grams, so we'll plug 100 grams into the equation here. It does tell us what the specific heat is. It is 0 0.20 joules per gram degree Celsius, so I will plug that in for the C. This time, we don't know what the change in temperature is. We know what the starting temperature is. It's 10 degrees Celsius. But we don't know what the final temperature is. So let's solve for delta T. So we're going to have to divide both sides by 100 grams and by 0.2 joules per gram degree Celsius. If I do it on the right side, I have to do it on the left. And so the 100 grams cancels on the right side, as does the 0.2. And so my joules cancel here, and so do the grams. And so I'm left with a degree Celsius. And so when I do the, the algebra on this, I get an answer of 50. So delta T equals 50 degrees Celsius. Now that's not the answer. 
This is the change in temperature. So we have to find what is the final temperature of this material. It says we started at 10 degrees Celsius. That's what this part here tells us. So think about that. If we start the temperature at 10 degrees Celsius, and then it has a change of positive 50 degrees Celsius, then what is its final temperature? Well, what's 10 plus 50? That would be 60 degrees Celsius. And so that is our final temperature. You can write that as T or T sub F or just final temperature. So this is the way to solve for uh, these, uh, these values in the equation Q equals MC delta T. Tea.